Good morning, and welcome to your daily Farm and Home Show, brought to you by the University of Kentucky Cooperative Extension Service. And now, here's your host. Good morning, and welcome to your Farm and Home Show. My name is Joanna Coles, and this morning we're visiting with Jason Phillips. He's a Simpson County Extension Agent for Agriculture and Natural Resources. Good morning, Jason. Good morning. Well, Jason, I see that you brought us some weeds this morning. Oh, and, yeah. And that's one thing that I think almost every farmer has in common, it is we have weeds that we need to take care right. of. Yeah, we've we've gotten a lot of rain this summer, mm -hmm. and I've just noticed a lot of a lot of weeds in a lot of our pasture fields, and so I'm getting a lot of questions about weeds, and uh, obviously one of the most important things is well, there's several important factors in getting good weed control, but first we got to identify what the weed problem is, the mm -hmm. target weed, and then we got to figure out how are we going to kill it, you know, how are we going to get it out of our pastures, and what's the proper time to do that. Yes, because a lot of people they'll call and they'll say, I have weeds mm -hmm. and I want to spray it once and I want to get rid of them and all. But that's unfortunately not the way it works. Right. I mean, I tell most folks, let's let's identify the weed. What weed are you intending to target? You know, now you may get some control of other weeds as a result of spraying, but figure out what, what your worst weed problems are and let's target those species so that we can at least control what's giving you the most fits. And you know, a lot of people will say, well, I have this particular weed now and it's flowering and it's got, it's already mm -hmm. has seeds on it, um, but that might not be the most optimal time right. to spray that particular You know, weed. we need to, so you can see here we've got tall ironweed with us, which is a problem in a lot of our a lot of our uh, pasture fields. But you can see here this is a really big plant. Uh, it's it's established. It's it's kind of stemmy, and you've got the flowers. So if we were to spray that right now, we're probably not going to get real good control of it. Now this is a good time of year to spray tall ironweed because mm -hmm. there's a but, lot of smaller ones out in the same field. I'm right, sure. there mm -hmm. is. But I just brought this one to sort of illustrate what the, you know, what the flowers look like and just a, a, have a good specimen to look at. But we really need to be able to identify those weeds when they're really small. Mm -hmm. And that makes it obviously harder. Uh, you know, we get the calls a lot of times when they're flowering. When you and see the purple flower. They're, <laughs> they're really apparent. But um, yeah, there's a lot of smaller, there were a lot of smaller ones in that field. And you can see here too on the root system, how established that root system is. You're gonna have a hard time controlling that with any herbicide. But Jason, if you have tall ironweed problems in a particular area in the field this year, mm -hmm. you're probably gonna have that again next year. Going forward, mm -hmm. for sure. Yeah, cause you know, they're gonna produce seeds and you know, a lot of weed seeds can lay dormant in the soil for like 30 years. Mm -hmm. So you're gonna continue if you've had problems with the weed in a particular area, chances are you've got a lot of weed, a lot of that seed in the seed bank, and you're probably going to continue to have trouble with it. So it's going to be an ongoing thing. So if you spray this year and get rid of it all, it doesn't mean that, that all those seeds in the in the ground that won't you've taken next care year. of it, right? Yeah. So what else did you bring with you? So we got chicory too. So if you look in a lot of your pastures and along the roadsides, you'll see purple flowers. Um, and this is chicory and it's really stemmy and it's tough to kill. Mm -hmm. uh, it also, you know, has a, a large sing single tap root, so it's hard to kill. Um, this is the time, the, the time you would want to be spraying. You know, a lot of your perennial weeds, late summer into fall mm -hmm. is when you want to be controlling those weeds. Mm -hmm. And we've got a really good publication. Of course, you can bring these to the extension office and we can help you. The agriculture agent in the office can help you to identify what weed that it is that you're having problems with. And we've also got this handy publication, AGR 207, mm -hmm. that uh, identifies a lot of our common pasture weeds. Yeah, and Jason, what I think is so helpful about this publication is this chart on the back, because it talks about the weeds and then when is the optimum time to spray those particular mm -hmm. weeds, and then even, <laughs> even gives you a product chart. Exactly. You know, uh, like tall ironweed is pretty tough to control, mm -hmm. and so you wouldn't, 2,4-D alone is not gonna, is not gonna kill that. You're looking at something like crossbow, pasture guard, forefront, uh, grazon necks, something like that. Um, I do believe 2,4-D and dicamba, along with the products I just named, are listed as effective on this. Also, I want to mention quickly that, uh, you know, um, herbicides aren't always the best way, too, mm -hmm. to control, and there is a, a chart or a listing on this publication for mowing. For instance, this time of year, 
is a good time to control milkweed, but you want to mow it. There's not a lot of sprays that are going to be effective. All right, Jason, that's a good point. So if you have weed problems on your farm, give us a call. Let us help you develop a plan. We appreciate you watching and hope you have a great day. If you have questions about today's topic, please call the Warren County Extension Office at the number on your screen. Thanks for watching and have a great day.